debris-filled asteroid field had claimed the lives of dozens of Ullian crews. But that didn't stop human explorer Jeffrey King from charging straight into it. Pollux, the Ullian leader, had called it an impossible mission. A massive asteroid was on a collision course with planet Ulia, but the Ullian's primitive technology was powerless against it. Many ships had already been destroyed trying to approach the asteroid through the treacherous surrounding debris field. But Jeffrey had a bold plan. With skilled human miners, demolition experts, and hotshot pilots, he believed they could blast the asteroid apart, deflecting the chunks away from Ulia. It was a long shot, but the only way to save the Ulian civilization from extinction. Pollux and the other Ulians scoffed at Jeffrey's scheme. To them, humans were reckless, simple-minded primates. They fully expected Jeffrey's makeshift crew to fail and perish like so many Ullian ships before them. But Jeffrey would not be deterred. He assembled his team of human rogues and rebels, each hand-picked for their abilities, and prepared to embark. A crowd of Ullians gathered as the human ship powered up its engines, many laughing and jeering, placing bets on how quickly the hapless humans would be killed. Pollux gave Jeffrey one last warning. No Ullians would risk their lives to help on this doomed mission. The humans would be on their own. Jeffrey simply nodded and fired the thrusters. His crew cheered as the ship rocketed away toward the asteroid, leaving the sneering Ullians behind. Jeffrey's heart pounded as they entered the debris field. Jagged rocks pelted the hull and alarms blared as he swerved and barrel rolled through the obstacles. But Jeffrey's pilots were aces. Through white knuckle flying and sheer courage, they evaded the deadly fragments. Finally, the pockmarked surface of the main asteroid loomed before them. It was now up to the human miners and demolition teams to do their job before it was too late. They began hastily drilling and placing explosives while Jeffrey watched the asteroid grow closer and closer to Ulia on his view screen. Just as they were about to set the final charges, an Ulian military ship suddenly dropped out of warp, guns blazing. The Ulians had disobeyed Pollux's orders and decided to confront the humans directly, convinced this was all a trick to sabotage their planet. Jeffrey barked at his crew to take cover as explosions rocked the asteroid. The Ullian's bombardment had triggered some of the charges prematurely. A chain reaction started, the blast growing bigger, chunks of asteroid flying past. Jeffrey dragged his injured crewmates back to their ship as the Ullians continued to assault them. He hit the emergency thrusters, desperately trying to escape as the asteroid cracked and splintered around them. Had they done enough to deflect it, or would all be lost? As the human and Ullian ships limped away, the shattered remains of the asteroid hurtled toward planet Ulia and its skeptical inhabitants, the crew's fates uncertain, the planet's future hanging in the balance. Chunks of broken asteroid pummeled the human ship as it fought its way out of the debris field. The hull buckled and screeched under the onslaught. Consoles sparked and smoke filled the air. Jeffrey gripped the controls, teeth gritted, as he swerved and dodged the deadly rocks. Hold on! He yelled to his crew as a massive chunk scraped along the ship's flank with a shower of sparks and shriek of tortured metal. Behind them, an explosion lit up the black void of space. Jeffrey looked back to see a blinding fireball blossoming where the Ullian ship had been moments before. Burning fragments spun away into the darkness. They're gone, whispered Kara, the ship's medic, her voice choked with emotion as she tended to an injured crewmate. The Ullian's... They're all gone. Jeffrey fought down his own shock and grief, forcing himself to focus on getting his own badly damaged ship and remaining crew to safety. Limping, sparking, venting atmosphere from a dozen breaches, they cleared the debris field and set a limping course back to Ulia. Battered and bloodied, the human crew stumbled out onto the landing pad, Jeffrey in the lead. He was met by a coldly furious Pollux and a crowd of angry Ulians. Pollux stepped forward, jabbing a long finger at Jeffrey's chest. You, he snarled. Your reckless actions led our ship to its destruction. The blood of our crew is on your hands. Jeffrey struggled to find words, exhausted and heartsick. We were trying to help, he began. Help, spat Pollux. You've doomed us all with your incompetence. 
Or was this your plan all along, human, to cripple us on the eve of our destruction? Angry mutters rose from the Ullian crowd. Jeffrey's crew tensed, hands straying toward weapons. Leave, Pollux roared. Take your ship and leave Ulia at once, before we make you pay for what you've done. Wait, Jeffrey pleaded. The asteroid. Our scans show some of the larger chunks are still on a collision course with Ulia. We have to stop them before it's too late. The only thing we have to do is rid ourselves of you meddling apes, growled Pollux. We'll take our chances with the asteroids rather than suffer your help again. My crew risked their lives to save your planet, Jeffrey shouted back, anger overcoming exhaustion. Some of them died trying to help you. Doesn't that mean anything? It means you're as foolish as you are destructive, sneered Pollux. Now go, before we send you to join your fallen comrades as a lesson to any other humans who think they can interfere in our affairs. Rage and grief warred within Jeffrey, but with his ship damaged and crew depleted, he knew they stood no chance against the angry Ulians. Furious and frustrated, he turned away. Back to the ship, he ordered his crew through clenched teeth. We're not welcome here. Amid jeers and insults from the Ulians, the humans reloaded their wounded and supplies and took off from Ulia, leaving the ungrateful aliens to their fate. But as the battered ship struggled back into space, Jeffrey found he couldn't just stand by and let the Ulians perish, even after their treatment of him and his crew. He called his remaining people together. I have a plan, he told them. It's desperate and dangerous, maybe even suicidal but it might be the only way to take out those last asteroid chunks before they hit Ulia. Jeffrey laid out his scheme to jury-rig the mining explosives into a massive bomb and detonated in the midst of the asteroids by overloading their own ship's engines and ramming the largest chunk in a kamikaze run. His crew erupted into argument, some insisting they had to try and save Ulia despite the Ulian's hostility others saying they'd already sacrificed enough for the unappreciative aliens. Jeffrey listened to them debate, torn by indecision and exhaustion. These people had trusted him. Some had already given their lives under his command. Could he ask them to do so again? To die for those who hated and reviled them? But if he didn't, millions of Ullians would perish, an entire world lost. Could he live with that on his conscience? Long into the ship's night, Jeffrey wrestled with the agonizing choice. By the time the shift changed and his bleary-eyed crew looked to him for orders, he had made his decision. This is a volunteer-only mission, Jeffrey told them solemnly. We're going to overload the engines, turn the ship into a massive bomb, and ram it into the biggest chunk of asteroid still headed for Ulia. Anyone who doesn't want to join what will very likely be a one-way trip Head for the escape pods now with my blessing and no hard feelings. You've already given more than anyone could ask. He paused, waiting for the rush to the pods, but not a single crewmate moved. One by one they met his eyes with looks of steadfast perseverance, giving short, sharp nods. Jeffrey felt a rush of humbled gratitude and fierce pride in his crew. They'd seen this through together, to whatever end. No more needed to be said. They got to work, stripping the ship of every useful component, welding and lashing explosives into place, coaxing more power from the damaged engines. Terse, focused chatter filled the air as they labored, broken by occasional grim jokes or quick, fierce hugs between crewmates. They all knew the odds of survival, but they had made their choice. Jeffrey input the ramming course and collision coordinates, his finger hovering over the confirmation key. Around him, his crew took their stations, strapping in for what would likely be their final flight. Suddenly, the calm crackled to life. Human ship, this is Ulia Planetary Defense. Respond immediately. Surprised, Jeffrey opened the channel. This is Jeffrey King of the UES Hammerhead. We're a little busy at the moment, Ulia, so say what you need to say. I'll be direct. Pollux's voice came through, strained and terse. Our scans show your ship on course to impact the largest asteroid fragment. What are you doing? Jeffrey laughed harshly. Solving your problem for you, Pollux. Sorry if my meddling apes are interfering in your affairs again, 
but since your defense forces seem incapable of dealing with the asteroids, we figured we'd handle it. Don't worry. We'll be out of your hair soon enough, one way or another. There was a long pause, then Pollock spoke again, his voice heavy. I have misjudged you, Jeffrey King. Misjudged all of you. What you are attempting is extraordinarily courageous. Even if it succeeds, your ship will likely not survive. We know, Jeffrey said simply. But we can't stand by and let your world be destroyed. Not while we have a chance to stop it. We're not doing it for glory or gratitude. It's just the right thing to do. I see that now, Pollock said solemnly. Forgive my earlier words and actions. The loss of my crew. The stress of the coming impact. I allowed grief and anger to overcome reason and honor. But I recognize now the nobility of you and your people. Understand that whether you succeed or fail, Ulia will remember your bravery and sacrifice. We are forever in your debt. Jeffrey felt a weight lift from his shoulders. Even if they died today, at least the Ulians finally understood. You're welcome, he said softly. Hammerhead out. He closed the channel and turned to his expectant crew. Okay, people, let's do this. It's been an honor serving with each and every one of you. For Earth. For Earth, they chorused back, faces set with dedication. Jeffrey input the final command, and the hammerhead leapt forward, engines screaming as they hurtled toward the looming asteroid. The rock filled the view screen, growing larger with each passing second. Proximity alerts blared. The ship groaned and shuddered around them as the overtaxed engines reached critical levels. Mere seconds before impact, Jeffrey thought he glimpsed a flash of light on the asteroid's surface, a glint of metal wreckage, all that remained of the doomed Ullian ship. Then the hammerhead slammed into the rock and everything vanished in a blaze of brilliant, searing white. Um. The blinding flash faded, and Jeffrey found himself alive, somehow. His ears rang from the explosion as debris rained down around him. Coughing through the dust-filled air, he called out, Boomer, you there? A groan answered him. Jeffrey crawled through the rubble, finding his friend pinned under a fallen beam. Hold on, I've got you. He strained, muscles screaming as he lifted the beam enough for Boomer to drag himself free. Did we do it? Boomer wheezed, blood trickling from a gash on his forehead. I think so, Jeffrey replied, surveying the devastation. The facility was in ruins, twisted metal and crumbled concrete everywhere. Fires crackled in the distance. Your blast took out most of the compound. They stumbled out of the wreckage, leaning on each other for support. In the distance, they heard the whine of incoming shuttles, reinforcements finally arriving. Cutting it a bit close, aren't they? Boomer grumbled. Jeffrey managed a weak chuckle. Better late than never. As Allied forces secured the area, medics rushed to treat the wounded. Jeffrey gave a brief report to the Ulian commander before collapsing from exhaustion. He woke days later in a hospital bed. Pollock stood nearby, his expression solemn. You've done it again, Jeffrey King. Saved our world when we least deserved it. Jeffrey tried to sit up wincing. The purifiers? Scattered. Those who survived the blast have surrendered or fled. Their leadership is gone, their base destroyed. The threat has passed. Pollux's eyes softened. Thanks to you and your team. We did what had to be done, Jeffrey said simply. Pollux nodded. Indeed. And Ulia will not forget. There will be a ceremony to honor your bravery once you've recovered but I fear some of my people may take longer to change their minds about humans. Jeffrey sighed. Change takes time. We'll keep working at it, one day at a time. As Pollux left, Boomer limped in, arm in a sling but grinning widely. Hey, boss. Heard you're getting a medal. Think they'll let me blow something up at the ceremony? Jeffrey laughed, then groaned as his ribs protested. Let's not push our luck, Boomer. I think we've had enough explosions for a while. Boomer plopped down in a chair, suddenly serious. You know, for a minute there, I thought we were goners. When that last blast hit... I know, Jeffrey said quietly, but we made it, and we stopped them. 
They sat in companionable silence, two humans on an alien world, survivors once again. Outside the window, Ulia's sun rose over a city slowly rebuilding, the first light of a new day. Three years crawled by after the purifier's defeat. Jeffrey stood atop a half-finished skyscraper, surveying the patchwork of reconstruction spreading across Ulia's capital. Cranes swung overhead, their shadows dancing across streets where humans and Ulians toiled side by side, rebuilding what had been lost. But beneath the surface of progress, tensions simmered. Jeffrey saw it in the sidelong glances, heard it in the hushed conversations that stopped when he approached. The gratitude for humanity's aid was fading, replaced by resentment of their continued presence. King! Boomer's voice crackled over the comm. Got a situation down here. Some locals are getting rowdy about resource allocation. Jeffrey sighed, heading for the lift. On my way. At street level, he found a crowd of Ulians facing off against human workers. Angry shouts filled the air. These supplies were meant for our district! An Ulian man yelled, gesturing at a stack of crates. Why are you redirecting them? A human foreman stood his ground. We're following the approved distribution plan. Your area isn't a priority right now. Not a priority? The Ulian's voice dripped with venom. It's our world, not yours. Jeffrey pushed through the crowd. What's the problem here? The Ulian turned on him. Your kind has overstayed its welcome, human. We don't need you anymore. We're here to help, Jeffrey said calmly. We've been through too much together to let... A rock whistled past his head. The crowd surged forward, humans and Ulians shoving each other. Jeffrey and Boomer struggled to keep them apart. Enough! Pollux's amplified voice boomed across the square. The Ulian leader strode towards them, flanked by guards. Disperse immediately, all of you! The crowd reluctantly broke up, but the air crackled with uncommitment anger. Pollux pulled Jeffrey aside. This can't go on, he said quietly. The council is demanding we scale back human involvement. Jeffrey nodded grimly. I know, we're getting similar pressure from Earth, but after everything we've been through... I appreciate what you've done, Pollux cut him off, but times change. Perhaps it's best if... A thunderous explosion cut him off. They spun to see a plume of smoke rising from the city center. Screams erupted as people fled in panic. What the hell? Boomer shouted. More explosions rocked the city. Buildings crumbled. Fires spread. Jeffrey's calm buzzed. This is Earth Command. All human personnel evacuate immediately. Ullian extremists are targeting our people. That's impossible, Pollock said, his face ashen. We would never... Another blast knocked them off their feet. As the dust settled, Jeffrey saw masked figures darting through the chaos, planting more devices. Those aren't Ullians, he realized with growing horror. They're human. Pollock stared at him in disbelief. What? Before Jeffrey could respond, riot police swarmed the area, roughly corralling humans and Ullians alike. Martial law declarations blared from loudspeakers. We have to stop this, Jeffrey said urgently, before it's too late. Pollux nodded grimly. My office, now. As they raced through the panicked streets, Jeffrey's mind reeled. Someone wanted this alliance to fail, and they were willing to sacrifice thousands of lives to make it happen. The real fight was just beginning. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.